Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in the heart of Europe. I hope everybody has had a great weekend thus far. Today, we are looking at IELTS Task 1, a bar graph example for the academic module. This lesson and uh, these videos are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS preparation and for general, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. That's general IELTS uh, help dot com on both of those websites. You can find lots of learning materials, including over 100 hours of video lessons, six original practice exams, and a fully interactive course for your phone, tablet, and PC. Also, you can download our app, Academic IELTS Help. Look for our logo in your Android and iOS app stores. Now this is uh, a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class coming up in 90 uh, minutes for you as well. So uh, make sure to tune in for that. Hi, Pavan. Good to see one of our members joining in. While we wait for a few more members, I will show you our websites real quick. This is what our academic website looks like. Uh, for the home page, you can click that big red button to join. Then you have a My Student account with all of our goodies. Hi, Amaitha Doc. Hi, Awaz. Hi, Hassan. Good to see more members getting in on the class. Here is the general version of our website, gielts-help.com. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Preeti. I'm happy many of you decided to make it on your Sundays into this class. I know that Sunday is usually the day most of us like to relax, but hats off to you for joining in today and deciding to expand your minds even further with the English language bar graphs and so on. Hi, Kesey. Students, if you have questions, uh, do not hesitate to uh, contact me, uh, Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Hi, Anish. Okay, so uh, today, task one, Members followed by task two in 90 minutes. Let's take a look at today's question. Here we go. IELTS task one, you should spend about 20 minutes on this task. The following bar graph shows a variety of sales strategies for several products at a company. Summarize the main information and make comparisons where relevant. All right, write at least 150 words. That means you need to write minimum 150 words for task completion. And uh, I do recommend writing three paragraphs, not just two. One should be your overview. Uh, the other should be your body, which is your analyses, and then your summary that will give you an even better task completion concept okay another reason to write a summary members is to just have even more of a task completion right it's like and to summarize let's complete this task okay let's look at today's graph there it is wham okay an interesting looking bar graph uh members viewers uh, for the bar graph in the academic IELTS, do make sure to practice uh, different types and different um, appearances of bar graphs. So sometimes you see a bar graph with these vertical bars. Sometimes you'll see bar graphs with horizontal bars. Uh, at times you'll see bar graphs where you have two of them. Uh, this one here is interesting because you have these separations with these lines. So it's almost like you're really looking 
at one, two, three, four, five different bar graphs, but in fact, they're all one, okay? Oh, Anish, that's super cool. <laughs> that's why you're sharing that you're applying for a student visa in Canada. And 7.5, Anish, that's uh, enough to apply for most master's programs, even some PhD programs. So good for you, uh, Anish. Uh, I hope that your application goes well. Thank you for coming back and sharing your result and uh, encouraging other students so that they know that yes, you can do it. Yes, you can achieve your goals. Good for you, Anish. I'm sure that you'll uh, get your visa. I'm sure that you will reach your study goals. Keep going, okay? All right, um, so back to point. Uh, members, I'm looking at the graph. I read the question, what do I do? What do I do now? What's my next strategic step to move smoothly through task one while attaining the best possible score. And many of you should know this by now. If you've sat in on a few different classes, it's basically the same strategy, the same step, no matter what kind of a pie chart, line graph, diagram, map, you're looking at, you should always be taking this first step. And Hassan very cleverly, and Hassan, I love how you know that. I know you're one of our newer members, and I do know that you've watched a bit of the classes, but it's great that you're picking up the information. Preeti and Kesey second your correct opinion. You paraphrase the uh, question and give more details to that using the graph. Now, that, of course, is your overview. And here it works because it's an expository essay. So your overview has two components, as you know. Component one is a paraphrase plus details. And component two is the most observable feature of the graph. Okay, those two elements, usually two sentences, will make up your overview. Now, of course, focus on your grammar accuracy, focus on your lexical resource, your vocabulary choices. So here we go. The following bar graph shows a variety. So do it now, members. So do the paraphrasing, add those details. The following bar graph shows a variety of sales strategies for several products at a company. Summarize the main information and make comparisons where relevant. Hi, Roshni. Welcome aboard just in time. Um, so here again is the graph. Okay. Ideally, you identify the number of products. So it's one, two, three, four, products A, B, C, D. And we have sales strategy one, two, three, four, five on our X axis. And on our Y axis, we have zero, 50, 100, 150, 200, thousand dollars. Okay, and so of course this is showing the revenue according to each strategy, according to each product. All right, I will start to compose that first sentence as well, and then we can make comparisons. So,
right? That's what I was looking for there. So when you saw me do that scroll, when I did that scroll, what I was looking at is the word company in the original question. And of course, immediately I realized that, wait a second, that company might have a name. Let's look at the title of that graph. Okay. There we go. So Pavan, first one out of the gates. Very good, Pavan. Uh, Pavan says, the above depicted bar graph illustrates various sale techni techniques for a number of products. Um, Pavan, so you're paraphrasing, which is okay, but you're lacking detail, all right? You need to uh, express to your reader uh, how many sales techniques, how many products. This is where you can clearly define that. And what is the name of the company? So by giving me that clear definition, I can give you better band scores because you're being more coherent, you're completing the task um, better. So give those details, Pavan. Just paraphrasing is not enough for those high band scores getting into the seven, 7.5s. I'm sure that, um, that uh, Anish will also agree with this. Anish got 7.5 and he might explain to us that, yeah, I definitely gave some details in my paraphrase. Anish, if you're there, is that what you did? Did you uh, paraphrase and give more details for your task one expository? Let me know. All right, Kesey says, the bar graph represents the sales of four products at Peach Technology Inc. by using five different strategies. Very nice, Kesey. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that detail. Okay. Ame the doc or Ame the doc says the given bar graph illustrates the difference in the sales in dollars for a group of products, A, B, C, and D using various strategies of peach technology company. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's good. Um, various strategies, name the number, five strategies, right? That's the reason we want to say that is because that is the description of our X axis is the five strategies. Okay. Hassan says the illustration depicts various commodity tactics for four products in Peach Technology Inc. And the unit measured is dollars. Dollars is the unit with uh, fifty thousand dollar intervals. So careful, Hassan, uh, with the y-axis definition. Make sure to be clear on that. Nice uh, use of the word tactics, Hassan, for a synonym for strategies. Okay, tactics is good. Um, Hassan, name the graph. So name that it's a bar graph. Uh, in the official IELTS, I was a little bit generous here because in the official IELTS, the original question will just say the following graph. It won't even tell you that it's a bar graph. So you obviously have to uh, name that. So it's good to do. And here's my paraphrase. Okay. So the following bar graph depicts the sales of goods from zero to $200,000. Notice how I use K instead of thousand. I don't want to write all those zeros and I don't want to write the word thousand. It takes too much time. K, capital K, is a clear uh, indication of thousand, so $200,000 with intervals of 50,000. Remember this um, additive descriptive clause. Notice my use of commas, a lot of commas in this sentence. An expository descriptive writing will tend to have a lot of these commas because commas, of course, in punctuation, allow us to give description and definition. So here is $200,000 comma description with intervals of $50,000 for four products comma description A to D, A, B, C, D comma according to five different strategies at Peach Technology Inc. Okay, Hassan, or sorry, Roshni, the bar chart illustrates the sales of four different types of products at a 
at Peach Technology, capital T, Roshni, part of the name, uh, with five different strategies, all right? Don't forget your y-axis. If you don't mention your y-axis uh, within this first sentence, you might just add it as a, an additional sentence. Any questions about this um, first step here of the, uh, the paraphrase with the details? Any questions about this sentence, members, before we go to the next part? Preeti says the bar graph illustrates five different sales strategies for four products, A to D at Peach Technology Inc. Period. Also, Y axis depicts zero to 200,000 sales of goods with $50,000 intervals, Preeti. You might as well finish that. Good. So Preeti, you broke that into the two sentences, as I mentioned, which is good. Uh, Preeti, capital P, capital T on Peach Technology. Okay. It's the name. It's got to be capital. Okay. All right. Any questions, members? Uh, if you don't have questions, a no answer is sometimes good too because that lets me know that I can just move on. Awaz says, what can I do if I cannot paraphrase the question? Good question, Awaz. Um, so Awaz, uh, if you cannot paraphrase the question, fine. Use the same words that you find in the question, but give more details, okay? So if I'm not able to uh, paraphrase the words, then I might just write the following bar graph shows sales of uh, four products for five strategies at uh, Peach Technologies Inc. So even if I can't paraphrase a was the question too much, I can still give detail and you're still going to be in a much, much better position than if you just repeat the same sentence, okay? So if you can't paraphrase, use the words from the question, but add details. Good question, Awaz, okay? Any other question? If it's a no, then say no, and we'll move on. Okay. Let's do it. Amei the doc, thank you for that. No, you're welcome, I was. Uh, next step, of course, the most observable feature, okay? How do you know what is the most observable feature? So when you're looking for the most observable feature, what should you do? And I've said this in previous classes, so, Let's see how many of you remember. What's the technique? What's the right strategy for identifying the most observable feature? What can you do for that? How do you identify that? Nice and quick, of course. Let's see who remembers, who's able to recall. Nope, Amethi Doc, it's not the maximum and minimum. Pavan, no, nope, it's not necessarily the highest and the lowest. Okay, no, nope, it's not necessarily uh, from left to right. Hassan uh, is the closest. So Hassan says, what does your eye catch first? So look for what is your eye catching first? Okay, that's a, that's a much better answer. That's the best one so far. And uh, you're right, Hassan, to put it another way, look at the graphic, the visual image that really kind of pops out at you. So not necessarily highest, lowest here, definitely, I think for this one, uh, you have to look at visually. So don't look at the words. Words don't matter for the main feature. I could erase these and just simply look at uh, picture-wise what jumps out at uh, you the most and look for the biggest, okay? Biggest is always the entire graph. So the biggest visual information is looking at the entire bar graph. Then you may look at these individual strategies. Okay, so in line with that, what jumps out at you? 
So when you look at this at first glance, what is the most prevalent piece of information that you notice? Pre-T, you're still looking for higher, lower, and it's not. Okay. Hassan says B is the best for selling goods. I don't think that's what pops out at me the most. Okay. So we can see that in B, there's a lot of nice high graphs, but or high bars, but that's still not what pops out at me at the most. Um, KC, uh, still not, okay? I think, I think you're all still getting lost on the individual strategies. So you're focusing on individual strategies and you're making these kinds of comparisons. Um, be a bit more general, look at the whole diagram. What do you notice when you look at the whole diagram? instead of the individual elements. And it's sometimes just really simple, okay? Just state what's right in front of you. We can talk about which strategy is the best and worst later on, or which one has the highest overall sales and so forth, but there's an even more general feature, an even bigger main feature that is quite evident. Again, remember, you're working for Peach Technology. You're doing a presentation on strategies and products. What are you going to say? What will be a part of your introduction in your presentation? So ladies and gentlemen of Peach Technology Inc., my name is Adrian and I have been analyzing five sales strategies over the past year for products A, B, C, and D. That was my first sentence. First, I want to bring your attention to what we can observe overall looking at these bar graphs. Immediately, we can notice that, just like I'm giving a presentation, but instead of verbally, I'm writing it down, okay? So Ame the Doc says, all strategies seem to work for products C and D, no, it looks like product D doesn't do so well in strategy one, okay? What I notice, I'll spoil the fun for you. Maybe some of you are realizing it now, but we'll see when we match up. So what I notice looking at all of these strategies and bars together is that Immediately, it is clear from looking at the entire graph that different products sales performance varied significantly based on the strategies or the strategy used, okay? That's what I noticed first, okay? So when I look at it, I notice the variance, okay? And I'm sure for those students, those members who are into math and statistics or economics and uh, accounting, will suddenly say, yeah, I get what you're saying. So if we draw a line here, or if we draw a line here, or if we draw a line here, if we draw a line here or here, uh, notice the variance. It's a very high variance of product performance uh, based on certain strategy. Do you see what I mean by that's the main feature? Is that is that clear why I would name that as my first observable main feature for my reader or for my audience if I'm giving a presentation. Yeah, Preeti, so fluctuation. So um, sales fluctuated according to strategies. Now fluctuate, Preeti, keep in mind is a better word for line graphs. Um, but uh, here, the better word instead of fluctuation is variance, variance, OK? 
Okay, so there's a lot of variance in the performance of products based on the sales strategy applied. Okay, that's my most observable main feature. Now I can start looking at individual strategies and product performance and um, and uh, uh, comparisons. Okay, all right. So um, what should I do next? So what's my next step? And I chose this little bit more challenging bar graph today because I always want to challenge your thinking. And this is absolutely the kind of bar graph that you can expect for task one in the academic exam. So what's my next step? I start my body paragraph, my analysis, but before I do that, right? So now I begin my body paragraph, which is basically my analyses. Okay. And before I write, I, and this is very important, it's a very bad idea to just start writing. Find the main comparisons, right, Casey? So I want to find the main comparisons. Okay, um, so what's my approach? I can kind of do this two different ways. Uh, so I can, there's two different um, approaches that I can take uh, to analyze. What are the two different ways that I may organize my points for comparison and contrast? either one way or the other way. What, what are the two ways? So what can I do? And it's, this is a very important question. This will absolutely make a difference in how fast you can write, how clearly you can write, and how good your band score will be at the end. Okay, and this is why you don't want to just begin writing, but you want to start by thinking. I know that 20 minutes is not a lot of time, and that's exactly why you want to take a minute here. Very good. So Kesey says you can compare strategies or products. Yeah, exactly. So I can say, okay, I'm going to start by comparing products as they perform within, within each strategy. So I can say, okay, I'll take a look at product A and I'll compare how product A performs in strategy one, two, three, four, and five. Sure. Or I can uh, begin by comparing strategies. So I can discuss how all of these products perform in strategy one, and then compare it to strategy two, and then make some comparisons to the other strategies. What do you think is the best? So if I am working for Peach Technology Inc., do you think I would begin by talking about strategy one first and then comparing it to two, three, four, five? Or if I want to make more sense for my audience, would I choose to first talk about how product A performed in each strategy be performed. Which one would you choose? Let's see um, who takes which side. So compare strategies to each other or compare product performance to each other. So Pavan says probably products is going to be the better approach. Let's see what others say before I give you my opinion. So Ame the doc says let's compare strategies. Preeti says no, nah, I think products. <laughs> Awaz says strategies. Preeti says uh, products are far easier. Hassan says, I believe keep it for the writer. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Hassan. Uh, Kisi says products as well. Um, Amethi Doc says strategies will help to be more concise with the data. 
Roshni, <laughs> very clever, says, let's do products and then strategies. Very clever. So uh, members, viewers, I agree with Roshni. I think starting with products and then doing an overall comparison of strategies is the best approach, okay? Uh, if you want to be very, very clear, start with products, okay? So compare the performance of product A in each of these and then uh, compare strategies later on, okay? Uh, that's going to be the easiest. The way you can decide that is visualize what you will write, okay? So think about what you will write. Here I can say, okay, product A performed the best with strategy three and five and the poorest with strategies four and one. Okay, I can even leave out two. I don't need to mention it. It's clear that it's somewhere in the middle. So that I can write very easily, all right? And then I can repeat that for, stra for uh, products B, C, and D. And I can see that, okay, that will be fairly easy for me to type or to write, paper-based, computer-based exam. And after I write three, four sentences about product comparison, then I can say that overall, the strongest performance of sales for products was using strategy two, and the lowest performance of products were using strategies one and five. Uh, interestingly, for strategies three and four, products C and D performed very strongly. However, A and B didn't do so well. So visualizing the information and my order in advance will help me, okay? So products, then strategies. And you can go uh, with uh, left to right if you want, or you could go with the strongest product, C and D, up to you. I would just go one, two, three, four. So comparing product one, 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 obviously, two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 and then the strategies, okay? Um, for the strategies, I might go with uh, two first, okay? So five there. Uh, then I would probably do strategies uh, three and four as my point number six. And then uh, maybe uh, strategy five, and one as seven, okay? So that would be my approach, okay? Um, Roshni, what will be overall? We'll get there later, okay? Uh, you don't need to think about your summary, Roshni, until you write it because often the summary will be clearest once you finish your analyses, all right? So you don't need to predict your summary in advance, Roshni. That's too much thinking. It's too advanced for the IELTS exam, unnecessary, all right? Okay, so uh, members, do we agree? Can we do it this way? Anybody object? Anybody say, nope, Adrian, you're out to lunch. I wanna do it differently. Okay. All right. So um, let's do it. Let's, um, let's start putting together our sentences, all right? So first of all, let's look at uh, product A. Uh, product A performs the strongest in strategy three. Sorry, I have to step back here. Yeah, so strategy three and strategy five is where product A performs the strongest, all right? Um, at roughly 125,000. So don't forget about your y-axis, okay? Uh, you can, it's easy to just suddenly forget that this y-axis exists, but do remember, uh, you don't need lots of numbers, but you do want to indicate some key numbers. So strategy three and five at 125,000 for product A, strongest, weakest is uh, strategy four at about 100,000. Put together that first sentence, okay? I'm going to do the same, and as fast as you can, students, let's start moving through these points, okay?
All right, so again, before I write, I need to have a clear identification of points for comparison and contrast. I'm uh, clear now, so I can start writing. Okay, so here we go. All right, so that would be my first sentence. Once you practice these, once you have identified your points for comparison, uh, your writing should be fairly smooth, fairly fast, especially for this kind of data. So looking at the data in more details, it is evident that product A performs the best with strategy three and five with sales around 125,000. Now, if you want to be really fancy, you can, of course, add in your dollar sign as well. However, it has the least sales with strategy four at around 100K. Now, I don't need to write about strategy one and two because it's clear for the reader and the audience that that means that strategy one and two is somewhere between 100 and 125K. So uh, product... Uh, a performs fairly well overall in all of these strategies, okay? Ame says sales of product A performed well with strategy three and five, where it amounted to roughly $125,000. Good, Ame. Hassan says product A shows a significant amount of sales in two strategies, three and five, which is nearly the same at about $125,000. Very good, Hassan. Uh, Hassan, just use numbers in um, task one, uh, even for zero to 10. You can just use numbers. I know I used the word zero earlier, but it's absolutely okay in this case to just write the number three and the number five. Um, in task two, of course not. There are different types of essays. This is an expository essay looking at data, so here, it's okay to use numbers, 0 to 10. You don't need to write the words, okay? Uh, Preeti says, product A has great sales of almost 125,000 in strategy 3 and 5, whereas it has the least sales in strategy 4 at 100K. Preeti, very nice. Uh, beautiful differences. So viewers, members, look at how Amey, Hassan, Preeti, and myself, we all wrote the same information, but we all use different grammar, different word choice, and they're all great, okay? They all work well. Okay, let's keep moving along. So now uh, for product B, okay? Uh, product B clearly performs the strongest in strategy two, close to 150,000, and uh, it has the lowest performance in three and four, with about 80,000, okay? So two highest, three and four.
All right. Making sure that I'm using uh, those words for comparison and contrast, of course. Uh, here, I'm stating, conversely, product B excels in sales using strategy two at $150,000 and does poorly in strategy three and four with revenue around 80,000. All right, no worries, Amarjeet, you're here now. Uh, members, viewers, remember, we do have class this week on uh, Monday and Tuesday, so tomorrow and the day after also, because we do not have classes next week from Wednesday to Sunday, I will be away, okay? So it's a different schedule. Amarjeet, I do post the schedules on the YouTube channel. Pay attention to those. I try to be regular, Amarjeet, with the schedule, but of course I'm human, so uh, there is going to be some variance in the year, okay? Usually, Amarjeet, they're Wednesday to Sunday, or sorry, Wednesday to Saturday, I know, but this week it's quite different, okay? No worries, you're here now, Amarjeet, you can catch up. Okay. So that's my next sentence. Again, paraphrasing, using synonyms as much as possible. So using the word excel. Excel means to do better. Uh, also the word poorly, uh, replacing the word least or to have lower performance. Okay. So that is the sentence for product B. All right. Now I'm on to product C. Preeti says, nonetheless, product B sales escalate in strategy two at 150,000 and has low sales in strategy three and four with 80,000. Good, Preeti. Hassan says, product B uh, rockets in sales using tactics two, nearly $150,000 while it has the lowest in both strategies three and four. Uh, Hassan, just a little correction uh, in real time with your sentence, but mostly good. Uh, Hassan, you do not need the comma after dollars before while because that sentence, the uh, dependent clause comes after the independent clause. So you don't need a comma in that sentence, Hassan, but otherwise a very good sentence, okay? So uh, now I'm going to go on to uh, product C, which is um, the uh, red bar here. I'm noticing that it has the highest sales in uh, strategy four, the lowest sales in one and five. In strategy four, it's all the way up past $150,000. And it's also the second strongest performing product after product D. So I'm going to keep all of that information in my mind and describe it as best as I can in one or two sentences, okay? All right. Um, Awaz says, um, the data for strategy two shows that the strongest performance of product B is found there around $150,000, while the lowest quantity for this product is in strategies three and four with an income of roughly $80,000. Not bad, Awas. So you're taking a very different approach, just a couple of grammatical mistakes. Careful, it's a very complex sentence, Awaz. It's easy to make grammatical mistakes there. Kisi says, by using strategy two, uh, product B, you don't need the helps, Kisi. So by using strategy two, comma, product B has a revenue of $150,000, which is the best sales for this product among the five strategies. Nice, Kisi. Again, you're taking a very different approach, so good for you, it's possible. Just a couple of changes, one word taken out, one word put in, and it's fantastic. All right, I'm going to now go on to uh, product C. So,
All right. So there is my sentence for uh, product uh, C. And you'll notice something interesting that I did there. So here's my sentence. Product C is a high revenue good with the best sales shown in strategy four over $150,000 and the lowest sales in strategies one and five just under $150,000. It is also the highest overall grossing product. Why did I say that? I took a closer look at these bars and I noticed that, yeah, okay, the highest individual sale of a product is D in strategy four, but if I add up the sales of product C in all five strategies, we can notice that it's actually the highest overall selling product. So D and C are interesting for sure, because here for D, we have this very high sales in strategy four, but we have very low sales in strategy five and quite low sales in strategy one that bring down its overall value. Again, if I'm a businessman working for Peach Technology Inc., that is a very important point for my colleagues, right? I'm sure you would agree that they would want to know that, oh, okay, that's great. But even more importantly, product C is our most valuable product overall. It performs very strongly in all strategies. Okay. And those are the kinds of uh, descriptions and explanations in an expository essay in task one academic IELTS that will get you those nice high bands, those band 8.59s. Okay. All right. Pavan says it is noticeable that product C has sold well in strategy three and four, whereas product C has the lowest uh, date in strategy one and least in five. Uh, Pavan, I think you're getting lost in just the size of the bars. Keep the overall image in mind and keep in mind your uh, Y axis as well, okay? Always remember your Y and X axis, uh, students, for um, line graphs and bar graphs. Okay. The X and the Y, the X and the Y axis for bar and line graphs should always be floating in your mind. Okay. Roshni says, interestingly, there was massive sales of product C in strategy four at above 150,000 period for this product, comma, people show the least interest in strategy one and two at nearly $150,000 respectively. Roshni, good, okay? That's really nice explanation, exposition, expository. Uh, just careful with your, um, uh, with your punctuation and your sentence breaks, Roshni. Otherwise, it's good, okay? Uh, Preeti says, product C is the best sales in all five strategies compared to other products. And also it has the highest sales at above 150,000 in strategies four, the lowest sales in strategies one and five. Good. Hassan says the figure for product C experiences the highest sales in tactics in five at about 150,000 in comparison with the others. And the second place at strategy four with more than 150,000. And again, notice that it has the highest grossing sales overall. So if I add this 140,000, 150, 160, 165, 130, that's going to be a greater total amount of gross sales, total sales than any other product, okay? Uh, Amarjeet, yeah, you could write that, but even more valuable, Amarjeet, is what I'm showing you right now, that it's the highest selling product regardless of the strategy used compared to all of the other products, okay? And see, that would have been a little bit difficult to identify at first glance when we were uh, writing our overview. So that's why I didn't do that. All right, so now we have product uh, D left to describe. 
and then we can compare these strategies. I'm going to stop here today, students, and I'm going to leave it to you to finish this task one. I showed you the beginning, and I have a feeling that you're now able to complete this task one with the remaining information, comparing product D, comparing a couple of the strategies, and writing a brief summary to get those high band scores. I will finish this essay for you over the next few days or next week, and I will post it on our YouTube community um, board, so you will be able to see it there, okay? Just follow up on it. I'll post it with the graphics, so don't worry. You will have the full essay from me later on. Uh, for now, let's wrap it up. Uh, if you're interested, members, you can send me your complete essay to my email, and I'll let you know an approximate band score and how you did. Okay, uh, so for everybody watching, join our premium package at aehelp.com and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. Hopefully, I will see most of you in my next class for task two essay writing where everybody can participate. It will be an advantages, disadvantages style essay. Good job. Uh, Kesey, nice uh, sentences, nice unique approach today. I loved it. Um, Awaz, good work, also taking a unique approach. Hassan, some nice, clear, expository writing. Roshni, some nice, detailed writing. Uh, keep it up, members. Keep it up. You're going in the right direction. That's it for now. Hopefully, catch you in 30 minutes. Bye.